Good morning, everybody. It is 9, 11 a.m. on March 11th of 2020. It's spring break right now, but rather than getting hammered and wasted like a lot of my peers are doing, I am making videos for you guys. And so, when we left off last time, we were working on this X-Wing. We got it, we got all, all the line art done, and then we added some pink flames just to make it stand out at the end. Now, what we're going to go over today is one method of shading, and that is cell shading. And when you think cell shading, you should instantly have your mind drawn to comic books. So here I've got an article pulled up from Looper. Um, content of the article is not important right now. We're just looking at the pictures. So in this Deadpool comic right here, uh, we've got a great example of cell shading. And basically, uh, cell shading is reducing the amount of blending that you're doing in an art piece and it creates this comic book style aesthetic that a lot of people find pretty desirable. Um, so if you look like along this line here where his nose is, there's not a very soft transition, especially right here by the mouth. And that's not true in all cases. There is a little bit of blending here. But you can see that there's almost like a language into where they're going to create these hard edges and it's based off of how sharp the angle is. And that happens in reality too, but you exaggerate it in a comic book style aesthetic to create the cell shading aspect that we're looking for. Um, if we scroll down, we've got Superman, Man of Steel. You can see some cell shading going on, definitely in his face where he's um, meant to look more chiseled and, and more rigid, stiff lines. And uh, he's got some sharper features. So great example of cell shading right there and right here. And basically, no smooth blending going on in these art pieces. As we keep going, we're going to see the same thing. A little bit of an older style of cell shading, but cell shading nonetheless. And this is probably the last example we'll look at. Another Deadpool example. But uh, if you look, you can see that there's actually quite a few different layers to the transitions. And you can see that there's this brighter white whitish pink here there's a little edge of a darker pink right there and then it transitions into this more maroon color being the darkest color in this palette um so cell shading doesn't necessarily mean that you have like one or two layers of transition it just means that you're not making soft transitions between them so put that put that away and we'll get back to our piece. And what we're going to do here is not a method that I came up with myself. I'll be sure and include a, a link to the original artist that I'm stealing this from. Um, but it is a pretty simple way of getting some cell shading going. What we're going to do is we're in Photoshop this time. It works a little easier in Photoshop and you'll see why in a second. It just has to do with how we're using the select tool. We're going to select sections that we know are going to be similar colors and we're going to send them to new layers. Okay, so uh, a little bit of setup beforehand. Um, in this piece, I am imagining that the light is coming from this area over here. So real quick, I'm just going to put a dot right there. And that way we just have a quick visual reference as to what we're looking at. Go back to layer one and we're going to start making our selections. So holding alt to zoom in and we're going to make sure we have the lasso tool selected. And then we're just going to go in and start adding, uh, selecting out the parts that we want. Now for right now, we want to make sure that our feather is set to zero. Okay, ah, numb locks off, that's why. <laughs> okay, let's get back to where we, where we were at. Okay, yeah, so we want our feathering set to zero. And because we're going for comic book aesthetic, we really don't need to worry too much about the lines, we're actually just gonna trace the lines. We 
Okay, so I've got this small section right there. Let's say that I want to trim this back a little bit. If you um, if you hold Alt and then go back over the section that you want to trim out, you can trim that out. If you hold Shift, it does the opposite. So we can go in and grab little bits that I missed there. And that's going to be the pattern that we're going to be following. I'm going to hold shift so that I keep adding to the same selection. And then alt when I get a little too messy. Okay. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good start for at least showing what we want to do. And so there's a couple things that we can do here. Um, if we, we we're, we're in more or less the middle of our lines, right? Um, people aren't perfect, so there's probably going to be a little bit of a gap in our coloring if we were to go based just on the selection that we've got. So what you can do is you can come up here to select, you can do modify, expand, and then expand by two pixels generally seems to work. And that just makes sure that we're, you know, for sure and getting everything that we need from our selections. Uh, you can do some math to work that out a little better. Just going to trim back where it got a little overzealous. Uh, what, what I mean by doing some math is uh, if you know the resolution of your piece, you can use that to figure out how many pixels you should do. Two pixels is generally pretty good for like anything in like the 1080p scale. Um, all right, so we've got our selection mapped out going to do, let's see, control shift J moves that to a new layer. Actually, before we do that, we want to get some color in there. So we're going to do I for our eyedropper tool. We're going to grab that color and we want to darken a little bit. Now, when you're darkening, uh, you should alter your blacks and your color values at the same time. Um, the reason why is as something gets darker, it generally tends to get uh, less saturated. Uh, if we look at our colors over here, I'm in a little bit of a trouble. And, and that's because uh, when I was doing this piece originally, I did everything in a perfect grayscale. So part of what we're going to do is we're going to be adding some color as well. So for now, we'll keep it at these at this really desaturated color. Just bump the blacks down a bit. And we're going for a pretty drastic transition. So big change in percentage there. I'm going to use our brush tool. I'm just going to paint this on. Okay, then control shift J moves that to a new layer. Actually, no, it's control alt J is what I want. There we go. Um, just leave that as layer three. That's good. Okay, now a lot of what I'm going to be doing is repeats of this. So I'm going to cut this clip here. I'm going to create some more selections myself and I will come back once we have something interesting to talk about again. All right, okay, real quick guys, um, before I get too, too much further, um, you'll see that as I'm doing my shading in the rest of the video, I'm making it so that I'm not going into parts that I don't want to bleed into. Um, I had to remind myself of the button that does this, but it's this little guy over here, this little checkerboard that locks the transparent layers or the transparent pixels. So when we moved 
this gray color to a new layer, and everything around it in that new layer doesn't exist, right? So those are transparent pixels. Therefore, if you hit this button, it makes that you don't bleed into those edges. Really nice for when you want to add details to a specific color that you've now added to your palette. Okay, so I, you can't see it because it's on. It's already on a new layer, but I've gone ahead and selected a bunch of these angled sections that are angling towards the uh, towards the light going up. Um, like I mentioned with our coloring, we want to be adding a little desaturation as we're making things brighter. So that's where we're going to do this right now. Um, if we look at our black levels, we want this section to be one of the darker sections, right? It's angled away from the light, it's receiving less light, it's, therefore it's less influenced by the colors. Um, in this piece, I'm imagining maybe Luke's X-Wing is being lit by a sun similar to ours, which puts it in the yellow-orange spectrum. We're going to leave the black levels where they're at, and we're just going to increase the saturation a bit. So that you can see that moves us along this spine of the triangle. And um, if you're new to Photoshop, that might be new to you. If you're a seasoned pro, this is um, may maybe a little uh, maybe a little slow. But um, as always, I, I try to gear my tutorials to people who know less than I less than I do. So um, pr pretty new, so to, to say the least. Um, anyways, we're going to increase the saturation. I'm not going to touch the black levels. I'm going to leave those where they're at. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to create the contrast and saturation and black levels between these two sections. So now take our brush tool. Oops, what did I forget to do? Forgot to hit that checkerboard. There we go. Let's make our brush size a little bigger too. You can really paint with broad strokes when you're doing this kind of technique. And um, actually, now that I think about it, I should bump the black levels down just a little bit. The reason why is I still need to have this section here, um, this where it's directly facing up, I need to have that lighter than this section. So bump those down just a little bit. Boom, there we go. And so that, that's how I'm going to go about adding color to this as we go. Um, if you're starting a piece uh, right from the get go and you haven't placed down any colors yet, you can be placing your mid tone, your highlight, whatever, uh, right from the get go. This is kind of like the reverse way to work where we place our shadow tone first and then we're adding color back in. Um, Maybe not always the rec most recommended, but you know, people that make too many rules for art don't really end up being great artists. So that's all I have to say about that. Okay, so you can see that we've made quite a lot of progress now. Um, we've got basically all of the flat surfaces taken care of. Um, I mean, there are a few mistakes like, like these things here. I'm not going to worry too much about them. In the end, an X-Wing is supposed to look beat up anyway, so we'll just say it adds character or whatever. Um, now, now we're left with all these curvy spots, right? Um, top of the engines, perfect example. Backside of the engines. And we've also got some greebling here on the top that we kind of want to have a different color just because it is, you know, in the model that we're taking from. Coincidentally, this greebling in the back ends up more or less the same color as the fuselage, but they do differentiate the, this color just a little more, which is why I'm going to want to put some more emphasis on there. Um, we've also kind of already laid the baseline for how we're going to do that with our windscreen. Um, I've taken a darker uh, desaturated gray color and applied that to the windscreen and then just gone and added color back into it as I went. And that has created this kind of aesthetic that you see here. Um, we're basically going to do that for all the rest of the greebling. Um, but what I do want to show you is how we're going to handle these curved spots. So again, going back to layer one because that's where I'm taking all my selections from. We're going to zoom in and we're really looking at, okay, what, what colors should be applied here? We know that there's a flat section right along the top here. Let me make my brush a little smaller so it doesn't look like I'm pointing at the whole thing all the time. We know there's a little flat spot right here. 
Sure, I'll go ahead and color it in. And we know that there's a angled spot right here, right? But it never goes as deep as it does over here. So it's going to stop more or less in this color range. So the way that we're going to do that, really simple. We're going to do the same thing that we've done before. We're going to make our selection. And uh, if you're wondering how I'm able to do straight lines, it's actually uh, really easy. I'm lazy. I grab a corner here, go to the other corner over here, and then Photoshop draws a straight line for you. The only hard parts end up being these curved, curved bits. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab the other section of the engine on the other side. Okay, so we've got our selection. Control Alt J, send that to a new layer. We're going to call this engine large because it's the big part, whatever. Helps if I type right. Okay. Now locker transparency, grab our eyedropper tool. We're gonna start by grabbing this section, use our brush tool, paint over it. And you know what? Let's actually make it just slightly darker because I want it to have just a little bit more more of a contrast with that section there and but I don't want to do it all all over so what we're going to do is I'm going to do a lasso on this layer now let's let's do a section where we have no feathering I think that's a, yeah that's about the right size let's let's make those edges look nice now we're going to add a little bit of feathering. We're going to make this like a 10. Let's see how that looks. And then we're going to add to our selection like so. Once you turn on the feathering, it gets a little uh, finicky about how it's uh, grabbing the pixels, it's kind of the idea. And then we're going to, we're going to go into our eyedropper tool. We're going to make sure we're on that color. I want to darken it just a little bit because this is a little bit more vertical. So we're going to decrease saturation and darkness together. Switch over our brush tool. All right, so let's take a look at what we've done here. This part we did with zero feathering, right? So it creates a nice hard edge. Zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Creates a nice hard edge so we get those nice crisp corners. This part we grabbed with 10 pixels of feathering. So you can see that it has done a bit of a gradient. So we've got a vertical section here, which matches more or less with the colors that it should be. And we've got a gradient here. Now, how are we going to do the highlight? Well, we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to uh, switch back to our, our lasso mode and just click outside the selection. That'll clear it. I'm going to bump the feathering back down to zero. I'm going to do our selection. Okay, now 10 ended up being a nice number. We'll just have to play around with that, see what you like. And so I'm gonna bump it back up to 10. And I'm going to add onto this section here because that is where our gradient should be. 
But wait, we're doing cell shading. There shouldn't be gradients. Mm. Mm. Go back to the examples I showed you of Deadpool and uh, Daredevil. Um, there's definitely some gradients there. Um, there's not too many hard and fast rules in art. That's kind of what I was saying earlier. If you get caught up in rules, you, you're you really putting a limit on your creativity. Um, so we've got our selection here. I'm going to pick my eyedropper tool. I'm going to grab this color. And we're just going to switch over to brush mode. And we're going to paint it on. Super simple. Not too bad if I do say so myself. Um, so on these smaller bits, 10 pixels, probably going to be too too wide. Probably going to bump that down to 5. Um, same, same here with the engines. But that definitely shows you how we're going to achieve this look. And we're not putting too much focus on blending. And there's definitely still some a little bit of a hardness there where it transitions from our feathered sections to our non-feathered sections but really easy way to do gradients. Applying this to other parts of, uh, of artwork, let me uh, pull up that article again, drag this back over. If we look at uh, you know, curved sections of a character, you know, a, a bicep right here or tricep area, uh, part of his face, you know, those curvy bits, um, Robin's leg, definitely uh, showing some gradients there. Uh, Harley Quinn, I mean, those are definitely some areas where you can use this trick. Um, there, there's still plenty of opportunity to use the hard lines, you know, where you're trying to get a good source of rim lighting or just show that there's a harsh transition um, in relation to the angle of light hitting it. Um, but definitely room for both. And so whenever you're wanting to use this gradient, just think soft curved sections of a character, soft curved sections of whatever. Um, you can use the hard lines for anything greater than, you know, that, that then, or, or anything more drastic of a transition than a curve. Um, anything with an edge or a corner, that'd be a great time to use the hard light. Um, I'm going to keep doing what you've seen me do already. I'm going to go in and start adding some gradients to all these curvy sections. And once we kick those uh, really bright colors right now out of the way and it's going to really tie this piece together so I'll be back once that is done. Okay guys we're back and we've given a rough pass at doing all the curved sections on our piece and um, now we're going to start adding some more of the details and um, so biggest thing I want to do is I want to add in the uh, lights from the jet engines on the back here um, the reason why I want to do that is that's going to influence uh, a lot of the piece. It's going to change the colors just a little bit. And because its light should uh, cast on everything on this backside here, um, which is part of the reason why I haven't gone in and changed the colors on these back thrusters too much. I don't necessarily know how much I want to change them yet. So I'm going to go to layer one. I'm going to create a new layer. And we need a better name than that. Jet thrust. Okay, so I've got a picture I want to show you here. This is just off of Wikipedia. We're, what we're looking at is the flame back here. Um, so if we were to analyze it, we see that there's very little uh, color over here where the flame starts to taper off. That makes sense intuitively. Um, it's brightest right in the middle, um, which again makes sense intuitively. If we think this is a column, right, a column of light, there's more mass to that column if you're looking directly through the cross section at the middle, uh, whereas opposed to the edges, you're looking at less of the column overall as far as what is directly in front of you. So it should be a little less light towards the edges, a little brighter in the middle, 
tapers off towards the end. Um, so that's what we're going to try and recreate in, in Photoshop here. So uh, we know that X-Wings, they have kind of like a, a reddish pink color when they're, when they're firing. So I'm going to grab a color that has very, a lot of brightness there. We're going to grab, we're going to want sort of a airbrush. So let's see what I have. We've got this one, let's try that. Okay, so painting a wild out of control jet thrust effect. If you're using the free programs like Sketchbook, they have some really cool glow brushes that make this really easy. You don't get as much assistance in Photoshop, but with Photoshop you get a wider palette of tools overall. So pros and cons to every program, that's why. Um, if you have the opportunity, you should use many programs whenever you can. Okay, so that's like the darker part of our that's like the darker part of our flame and I'm playing around a little bit here. You can even take the effects layer, which would be, which would include things like our jet thrust, you can take that over your line art, and you're going to obviously lose the line art underneath, but you can get some pretty cool things going on because it starts to look like it's now, you know, definitely hiding it because there is all that light there. I'm gonna go up to a lighter color. So same color family, lighter color, starts to really sell the idea that this is a light source. I'll do a little bit of a zoom out. Definitely looks better than the previous one we did, right? <laughs> okay, now what we want to do is we want to taper these ends off a little bit. So let's go back to that darker color. Let's go even darker now. Switch back to our brush. So I'm coming back over in black, basically. I'm just kind of knocking back the tips of those flames a little bit. Because I'm using a wider brush, it's making it, it's giving them a little more of a taper. Which is what I'm going for there. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I feel like. So now we've got these light sources. The obvious question is how is that going to interact with what we've already painted, right? So we're going to go back through these layers that we've already done. I'm just going to start adding that in. So I'm going to go to, where is it, verts for my vertical sections. And I'm going to stick with my airbrush. And let's see. Good habit to get into is to copy the layer. Now, so I've got a verts copy, so I don't want to do everything directly onto the original layer that I was working on. Um, so we're just going to go in with an airbrush. Okay, that's too much. Want it to be more subtle than that, so we can drop the 
flow and the opacity down. That's better. And if you're looking at a lot of comic books, uh, one thing that you'll kind of notice, or at least I've noticed it, is um, they'll do cell shading for a lot of the stuff that have definitely a, a concrete object creating them. But for something like a flame or an effects layer, and they start to break the rules with blending a little bit. So that's why I don't feel too bad doing it here, because I've seen them do it there. And so I'm just going in and adding some pink with my airbrush so that it looks like these things are part of the same world they're all getting interacted with all this pink from the flames okay I think that's looking pretty good what do you guys think do be gentle in the comments please <laughs> all right so what else can we do? And uh, we do still want to darken the back ends of these. So let's create a copy. Now that I know how to do that, it's really easy. Go to layer and then it's duplicate layer. We're gonna create a copy. That's gonna put it over our small curves section there. Let's try one of these blending modes. Try let's try darken. Okay. And then let's grab my darker tool. Let's grab that color. Make sure that's locked. Brush. Let's bump the opacity back up. Hmm. Do I like that? Um, it applied it pretty, um, so we've got a dark color on there. Let's see what happens with some of these different blending modes. So, so I think I'm liking hard light. Basically just took the color, mixed it a little bit. And I'm liking how that, how that looks. All right, what else can we do here? At this point, it's just, it's really just about the details. Um, let's go back to where we put our jet thrust layer. And I want to create a new layer over this. Let's give this a name like grunge. Because we're going to use this layer to add some of the decay that an X-Wing would experience. So. Sticking with an airbrush, going to put the opacity at like 50. And I'm just going to pick out spots that should, should look beat up. So I'm going to pick like a kind of dark brown color. So like in here, brush size is going to matter a bit more. Let's put this one just underneath the line layer. So that's where those torpedoes are getting launched from that brought down the Death Star. So definitely going to be a lot of dirt around there because it's hot. Actually, let's go for a darker color. Um, there's always a bit of carbon scoring on these nose cones. You now flying through space, little bits of debris. Our 
darken that part up a little bit. And grab the wing, the leading edge of the wings. Playing with around with the uh, brush sizes. Move that there. Just little flick motions. Mm, do I like that? Let me try to blend it with a larger brush size. Yeah, it's not terrible. Really, it's up to you. You know, when you're doing your own piece, you can make your own decisions. This is my piece, so I'm, I'm the one leading the charge, better or worse. Um, yeah, I feel like this is starting to look pretty good. Um, there are a few mistakes, uh, you know, Trent brought over from the original piece that we were working with so we can clean those up do that very simply by going back to layer one and we go and grab all the stuff that is oddly colored so grab our lasso tool put one there grab the other point over here go in that section go in that section uh, he did forget about R2D2. He didn't get a paint job. Well, if I was selling this, I'd definitely put a lot more work into it. But this is just for fun. Just to give you guys a overall look at how cell shading works. I think I've got most of the big spots here. Oh, there's one there that was bugging me. Like that. One here. All right, so got all those grabbed. Send those to a new layer. We call this re-black. We're going to grab our paint bucket and go for jet black. We're going to lock the layer transparency. And maybe it'll be easier with a brush, a really big brush. Hard brush this time. So we reduced the size of those spots. I could go in and hit those, you know, with a bit more precision, get a better result overall. But um, I think I want to stop here. Um, one thing we could do, it, it, you guys probably already noticed this on our grunge layer. Probably want to go back with the eraser tool 
and go and hit the spots that uh, make it look like the edge is like ghosting off into into space. So just knock that back a little bit. There you go. Yeah, looks like I bled onto the wing a little bit. Um. Anyways, you guys get the point. That is how cell shading works. Um, tried to keep it simple, not not too high level. Just really quick getting it done. Um, but yeah, cell shading is a lot of fun. Gives you a really quick comic book aesthetic. Um, using this method, using the select, basically as a paint paintbrush, is a really fast way of getting it done. Um, go ahead and. Uh, let me know what you guys do with cell shading. I'd love to see any artwork that, that you guys do. You can go ahead and share it on the uh, Odd Job Entertainment uh, Facebook page. If you send it there, I will be sure and post up any anything that you guys send me. Um, but yeah, if you learned something, go ahead and hit drop me a like. Like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Um, starving artists don't make a lot of money. So, uh, you know, um, any little bit helps. Um, but hope you enjoyed the video most of all. And this is Odd Job Entertainment, signing off.